In this session, I will introduce classes, objects, and instances. Classes and objects help make our program more organized, powerful, and easy to reuse. We create a class to represent people, places, and things. A class represents a condition of the real world. An object is based on a class and use the class as a blueprint to create an instance. Therefore, each object is automatically supplied the same attributes and methods of a class. Create an object from a class is called instantiation and we work with instances of a class. To create a class, we write the keyword class. So far in the previous sessions, we have covered some basic data types like int, string, let me spell that right, float, and boolean. Python also offers some data structures like a list. However, not all data falls under these basic data types. These are built in. As a result, Python allows us to create our own data type using a class. For example, a dog or a cat does not have a representation in one of these built-in data types. So to create our own data types, let's say we have an employee. And to represent an employee, that means our class will be called employee. And I cannot forget the colon. Notice employee starts with a capital letter. By convention, the name of a Python class begins with a capital letter. If you had a class that you wanted to leave empty, then we write pass. The purpose of pass is to let Python know you want this class to be a placeholder for future code. It helps to avoid getting an error. For example, if I comment pass, then write imp1 equals employee, then run, we see an error. If I remove the comment, then run again, now we do not see an error. SE code shows zero. Now we see a line under employee. There is a line under employee because I have not added a doc string, it's missing. The doc string is not required, but it describes the class. I will add a class for an employee's information. Sometimes there is confusion around objects, classes, and instances. The employee class is a template for the employee object. The employee object is assigned to the instance employee one. For example, name equals Joe Doe. Joe Doe is assigned to name. It's the same with objects. Employee one is not the object, but refers to the object. I'm going to remove name equals Joe Doe and we see employee one is an instant variable and created when we instantiate the employee object. That's why we say employee one is an instance of the employee class. You know how a company can have more than one employee? We can also create more than one instance of an employee by writing imp two equals employee. Now we have two instances that refer to the employee object. At runtime, the employee object allocates memory for employee one and employee two. Let me show you when I print imp one, uh-oh, and print M2. Run and the console shows different memory locations. 
It shows different memory locations because the employee object has memory for two instances. That means the employee class will return an instance or reference to employee one and also return a reference to employee two. To verify, there are instances of the employee class. We can write is instance, then pass in two arguments, the instance employee one and the class employee also print. I'm going to copy and paste and do the same for employee two. Now, when I run, we see true two times. True means they are instances of the employee class. That's the difference between a class, object, and instance. To recap, the class is a blueprint for the object. Therefore, an object has a copy of all information from the class. That information is called attributes and methods. We only access attributes and methods when creating an instance. In this example, the employee object encapsulate all of the information from the employee class, then allow employee one and employee two to access that information. Next, I will create information and show you how to access that information. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next session. In this session, I will continue with classes and objects, but show you how to create attributes and methods so an instance can access that information. Employee 1 and Employee 2 are unique instances of the employee class, so they will have their own unique data. From the last session, we covered the difference between classes, objects, and instances. A class is a set of directions for how to create an instance. The employee class instructs Python to create a unique instance representing a particular employee. Therefore, inside the employee class, we define attributes and we define methods. An attribute is a quality or characteristics about a person, place, or thing. A method performs an action on the person, place, or thing. In Python, there is a difference between a method and a function. You will hear some people call a method a function and call a function a method. The difference is a method is connected to a class. A variable plus the dot operator are required to call the method. However, a function is not connected to a class and does not require a variable. Input and print are examples of a function. For our class, let's start with an initializer by writing DEF prefix with two underscores, init with two underscores following init, and we write self as the parameter. The initializer is a special method that operates like a constructor. Python automatically runs this method when creating a new employee instance. The self parameter can be any name like this. However, in Python, we use self as the convention. It's required in the method definition and comes before all parameters. The other parameters will be our attributes, which provide information about the employee. All employees have a name, employee number, and salary. All three attributes represent an employee and describe what each employee has in our program. Each piece of information is data about an employee. Therefore, that makes up our employee data type. Now, let's assign each attribute to a variable by writing self.name equals name, self.imp underscore num equal to imp underscore num, self dot salary equal to 
salary. Now, when it comes to the attributes and variables, they do not have to match each other, but it's convention. We can write self equals number, but I prefer them to match each other because it's convention and I just like for it to be that way. Now, we have to create an employee. And when we create an employee, the value that's stored in salary is assigned to the variable self.salary. It's the same process for employee number and name. So it's stored in the parameters and then assigned to the variables. When it comes to a method, it determines what action an employee can do and what we can do with the employee. For example, we can get the employee's information by writing DEF to define the method. The name will be get employee info and we put self in the parameter. Let's return the employee name. I'm going to also skip a line by writing backslash in and also return the employee number by writing employee num and we're going to put the value inside a string function by writing self dot imp num. I'm going to also skip another line. This method has one action, and that's to return the employee name and number. We see self.name and self.impnum are the variables. Any variable that starts with self is available to every method in this class. Self is the only parameter because the method does not require no more information. We are finished creating the attributes and the methods. Now, we are going to access the attributes and call the method. First step is to create an employee with the name like John Doe with an employee number of one and a salary of 134,000. When Python read this code line, it would call the initializer method. The purpose of the initializer method is to create an instance representing a unique employee, then set the attributes according to the values passed from the arguments. When the arguments John Doe 1 and 134,000 are sent to the attributes, then the values are returned automatically and stored in the instance employee 1. It's the same for employee 2. Name would be Jane Doe. Employee number would be two with a salary of 150,000. Employee one and employee two are separate with its own set of attributes and methods. The dot operator allows Python to access each attribute and call each method. We write imp one and the dot operator and we see all of the information from the employee class. For this instance, attributes employee number, name, salary, and both methods. Get employee info and the initializer. It's the same for employee two. We see the same information. Let's print the attributes by writing imp1, uh-oh, imp1 dot name comma imp1 dot employee number also imp1 dot salary I'm going to copy and paste this same information for employee 2 then change 1 to 2 I'm going to run and the console shows each value 
Jane Doe, name, one as the employee number, 134,000. John Doe, one and 134,000. Jane Doe, two, 150,000. The truth is from the last session when we show how both employee one and employee two are instances of the employee class. When it comes to calling a method, there are two ways to call a method. We can use the instance or the class name. The instant variable imp1, then call the get employee info method. For the class name, we write employee, then call the method get employee info. However, with the class name, we must also pass the instance as an argument imp2 because Python does not know which instance we want to run. Let's print both by writing the print statement before we call the method. And I'm going to run and the console shows both employees information, their name and the number. That's it for Python classes, objects, methods, and instances. I will see you in the next session. And thanks for watching. <laughs> in this session, let's compare Python class variables and instance variables. A class variable has the same data for all instances of a class. However, an instance variable has unique data for all instances in a class. I will build on the previous session using this employee class. It's not true for all companies, but some companies give a bonus to their employees. This bonus will be $10,000. Bonus is a class variable, and the instance variables are defined using self, self.name, self.impnum, and self.salary. Bonus is a class variable because it is defined inside the class, but outside each method. Therefore, the class variable is owned by the class and is shared across all members of a class. The members of a class are instances and methods. Let's start by sharing a class variable using an instance. Then I will show you how to share a class variable using a method. We share using an instance by writing each instance imp1 dot bonus and imp2 dot bonus. Since bonus is a class variable, we can also access the bonus variable name by using the class name employee dot bonus. Then print the value for each one. Employee one and employee two. When I run, we see the same value for each instance and employee. Let's separate both employees by writing their name and their salary. So I'm going to write imp1 dot name comma imp1 dot salary and I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to change one to two. Bonus is a good candidate for a class variable because both employees receive a bonus. Anytime we create an employee that will get a bonus, we can also update the bonus for the entire class after initializing the bonus by writing employee dot bonus equal to $15,000. Run and the console shows $15,000 for both employees. However, we know all employees do not receive the same bonus, so I can update the bonus for one employee. How about I change employee two by writing M2 dot bonus, then assign a value of $20,000. Now, when I run this time, we see a different value for Jane Doe. 
Employee one does not have the bonus attribute. However, employee two has the bonus attribute, but only after updating the value to 20,000. Let's print the dictionary by writing imp1 dot. Do you see the two underscores before and after dict? That's a way to see the namespaces in Python. Select it for employee one and also for employee two. And I'm going to do this before updating the value to 20,000 and after updating the value. Let's print the namespaces for imp1 and also print the namespace for employee two. So when I run this time, we're gonna see the console return all of the namespaces. However, the namespaces we see are name, imp num, salary, but bonus only shows up the last time. That's because bonus, which is a class variable, only belongs to the class, but was created for employee two when updating the value. This concept is important for the next concept for sharing a class variable using a method. I'm going to show you how to access the class variable using self and the class name employee. There are times when we should use class and other times it's best to use self. Define a method by writing DEF and the method name, which is add underscore bonus to salary. The variable name will be salary underscore bonus. The value will be an integer. So let's write the int function self dot salary plus at this point to access the class variable, we must use self or the class name employee. If I only write bonus, then an error shows up that says unresolved reference bonus. Let's start with employee dot bonus and return the employee name by writing self dot name. I'm going to also insert a space by writing backslash in, then return the salary plus bonus by writing the string function and write self dot no my bad the salary underscore bonus okay i see why it's doing that let me concatenate it append it by writing salary underscore bonus and also insert a line now the next step is to call the method from our two instances we can also use employee class but Let's focus on employee one and employee two. So I'm going to write imp one dot add bonus to salary. And I'm going to also print and do the same for employee two. And when I run, notice the value for salary plus bonus. We see 149,000. That's because it combines 134,000 plus 15,000. But notice employee two, it shows $165,000 when combining the salary of 150,000 plus 20,000. 165,000 is not correct. It should show 170,000 and not 165,000. Now it shows $165,000 because I use employee.bonus in the add bonus to salary method. For this situation, it's best to use self.bonus because self allows us to override the bonus value for each employee. Run, and this time 
we see $170,000. There are cases when we should not change the value. For example, the number of employees in a company should remain the same for a class. Therefore, as a class variable, we write total underscore employees initialized to zero. In the initializer method, we can increase the total number of employees by one when creating a new employee. Employee dot total employees and I'm going to use the shorthand by writing plus equals one. The init method runs automatically every time we create a new employee instance. John Doe and Jane Doe. Let's print employee by writing the print statement employee dot total employees. When I run, as expected, we see two employees. That's it for Python class variables and instances. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. In this session, we are going to look at inheritance. The purpose of inheritance is to let one class pass everything to a different class. This concept helps with the drop principle, which stands for don't repeat yourself. It helps to reduce code duplication and support code maintenance. Therefore, we do not have to start from scratch when creating a new class. For example, right now, I have a class called employee. The employee class will be our parent class, also known as super class. It has information that will be inherited by a child class, also known as subclass. The information are class variables, attributes, and methods. The methods are initializer, which is the init method. Also, get employee info method plus the add bonus to salary method. A child class is a specialized version of a parent class. Therefore, good candidates for child classes are developers and testers because they are specialized employees with unique skills to write code. When it comes to, to the drop principle, an engineer not respecting that principle would copy all of this information and paste this information into a new class called developer. But this defeats the drop principle because we should not repeat the same code for a few reasons. But one of the reasons involves a possible update to our code. A requirement may change to make a function such as int to float. As a result, the code would change in two locations and not one location. When I run, we see the value change to a decimal for salary and bonus for John, John Doe and Jane Doe. I'm going to change it back to int. So the value is a whole number. Plus I'm going to remove this duplicated code in the developer class and only write pass. In the previous session, I mentioned pass is a placeholder for future code. Let's say we want to create a specialized version of the employee class. To inherit, we write the name of our parent class in parentheses after specifying the child class. The developer inherits the employee class. To verify the inheritance, we start by writing a built-in function provided by Python that is called is sub class. We pass in the child class, which is developer, followed by the parent class, which is employee. This statement will return true or false, but it will return true because the developer class is a subclass of the employee class. 
Yes, we see true. Now, we can write as many subclasses as we need to to complete our program. At this point, the developer class will automatically inherit all of the values, such as the attributes, variables, and methods from the employee class, all of the information. Let me demo the inheritance by writing imp1. Now, we already have imp1 for employee. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all this information from the previous session and write imp1 developer. Do you see self, employee, name, imp num, and salary? That show the relationship and which arguments to pass. Name is developer John. Employee number one. Salary is $120,000. Also instantiate M2 equals employee. Name, employee, Jane. Employee number two. Salary, $110,000. Recall the developer class is empty and only have pass as a placeholder. However, developer has access to the employee class by writing imp one and a dot operator. The dot operator provides access to the variables, attributes, and methods. Notice we see imp num, name, salary, bonus, add bonus to salary, the initializer, Get employee info, total employees from the employee class. How about we call the add bonus to salary method? Print the value for employee one and employee two, which are in two different classes. I'm going to write employee two. And when I run, we see $130,000 for developer John and $120,000 for employee Jane with inheritance. Python allows us to customize the child classes with more information than the parent class. We initialize the developer subclass with its own init method. Go to the parent class, which is employee, and only copy the init method because there is no need to copy the instant variables. So when I go back to the developer class, I'm going to paste the init method. Now, at this point, we can add another attribute. The extra attribute will be lang, which is short for programming language. Now, create the instant variable by writing self.lang equal to lang. Next is to call the init method from our parent class. There are two ways to call the parent class. One way is to use super and the other way is to not use super. Let's start by using super as the keyword parenthesis dot followed by two underscores init. Then we go going to Add the attributes name, employee, number, and salary. This statement connects the employee class, which is the parent, to the child class developer. Notice our background for the developer instance is now brown. This is an error because we must include another argument since we added the lang attribute. Let's write another argument by writing Python as the program language. Now the error goes away. We can print lang for Python by writing print employee. Uh oh, one is a imp one dot 
and call lane. I'm going to add another comma, then write developer. When I run, the console shows Python for employee one is a Python developer. The next class, let's call it tester. And it will also inherit the employee class. Define this init method by writing DEF to underscores init uh -oh, self. And the attributes will be name, imp, num, comma, salary. Now I'm going to write another attribute called web mobile. Web mobile is the customized attribute for our tester class. Create an instance variable by writing self dot web underscore mobile equal to web underscore mobile. The other way to call the parent class init method is by writing the class name employee dot underscore init. Now, when we call using the employee class, the parent class name, we must add self. Now, notice the difference. Using super does not use self, but employee must use self. And then we can write the attributes. Name, employee number, and salary. We generate an instance of the tester class by writing M3. I'm thinking about printing the value. M3 equals tester. And the name will be, how about we say tester James. Employee number three. And the tester makes $100,000. And we're going to pass in how about we pass in web for the other attributes? Now we print the value for web by writing employee three is a comma imp three dot web mobile tester. Now when I run we see employee three is a web tester. That's it for Python inheritance. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next session. In this session, I will continue from the previous Python session that talked about inheritance. There is a difference between multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance. When it comes to multiple inheritance, the child class can receive class variables, attributes, and methods from more than one parent class. Therefore, Python allows us to inherit multiple classes. Multi-level inheritance refers to a derived class inheriting another derived class. In other words, it's when a child class inherits a parent class and that parent class also has a parent. I'm going to show you the difference between multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance plus demo the method resolution order. Here's a diagram of multiple inheritance. We see the child class at the bottom inherits from parents one and parent two. For multi-level inheritance, we see there are two child classes and two parent classes. The class at the top is only a parent while the class in the middle is a child and a parent. However, the bottom class is only a child. In the demo, I'm going to combine multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance. The IDE has an employee class, which is a parent, developer, and tester or child classes that inherit the employee class. Now, I will create a class called automation 
engineer. The automation engineer class would have two parent classes. It has developer and tester as the parents. Write pass. So there is no body. At this point, automation engineer represents multi-level inheritance that inherits multiple parents. Let me show you the MRO, which means method resolution order. It is the order when Python looks for a method in a class hierarchy. There are two ways to see the MRO. The first way start by writing the subclass name automation engineer dot MRO. Then print the types. When I run, before I run, notice the order shows developer, then tester. Now, when I run, we see automation engineer. Next is developer, then tester. After tester, we see the employee class, which is the parent class. Last is object. Object is the parent class of all classes. Therefore, it will always be last. We know the employee class is the parent. But if I check the MRO, the type will show in the console object. It still shows object, although we did not specify a parent because object is the superclass of all parents. Now, let me add some methods to show how automation engineer inherits from both parents. For developer, I'm gonna maximize. And for developer, we write DEF to define the develop applications method, pass in self then return employed to develop. For tester, let's write the same thing, but let's name this test underscore applications. Pass in self, then return employed to test. Now, Customize the automation engineer class by creating our initializer. And to create the initializer, we write DEF two underscores init, then pass in self. Now the attributes, let's just copy those from the developer and tester classes. Name, imp, num, and lang. And I'm going to paste. Now, we also need to get the web mobile attributes from the tester class and paste that one. Now, we have the option of writing super or the parent class name, like I mentioned in the previous session, to call the super class. I'm going to start with the parent class, which is developer. Two underscores init, and for developer, when we call the parent class name, we must pass in self. And I'm gonna use name, imp, num, salary, and also lang, but I will erase web mobile because that's for the Chester class. And for this, let's write super. Now in the your production code, I doubt if you will write developer and super, mix it like that. You may use one or the other. But for now, I'm going to write name, imp, num, salary, and also pass in web mobile. And when we use super, we do not need to write the keyword self. Before I call each method from the super classes, let me show you how the second way will look up the chain of classes using the method resolution order. You will see how the order in which we declare each parent class makes a difference. If I change the parent class to be tester, then developer, 
you're going to see how the MRO will also update. Now, we use the second way by writing the help function and pass in automation engineer. Print the types, run as expected. We see the, met the method resolution order. The method resolution order shows automation engineer, tester, developer, employee, then object. We also see the initializer method defined in the automation engineer right here. Plus the methods from tester, test applications, from developer, develop applications, and both methods from the employee class. Add bonus of salary and get employee info method. At the bottom, we see data and other attributes inherited from employee, and those are bonus and total employee class variables. Last, let me show you how the automation engineer class can call the methods from both parent classes. I'm going to start by writing automation equals automation engineer. Name will be automation Joe. Employee number four. Salary 105,000. Web mobile, that's right, mobile. And the language will be Python. Now, when I use the reference automation and type automation dot app, we see both methods. The first method shows develop applications from the developer class. And the second method shows test applications from the tester class. Automation develop applications. Let's also print Automation Joe by writing automation dot name. Add a comma. And I'm going to also print the values. And let's do the same thing for the test applications by changing develop to test. And when I run, we see Automation Joe employed to develop and Automation Joe employed to test. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next session. In this session, let's look at polymorphism in Python. Polymorphism is a compound word that means many specified forms. Dictionary.com shows poly stands for many and morphism is the condition or quality of having a specified form. That's how we get many forms. By default, Python supports method overriding but does not support method overloading. A parent class defines the general method that can be used by all of its child classes. I will place the transcript, PDF documents on GitHub. You can follow me on Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn and Facebook. Also subscribe to my channel. Polymorphism is related to inheritance. In this diagram, there are four classes. Employee is the parent, while a developer and the tester are the child classes. From the previous session, we saw how the automation engineer class inherited two classes, developer and the tester. When it comes to polymorphism, the automation engineer class and both parent classes maintain the capacity to take on many forms. For example, the automation engineer class can pick up its own behavior plus the behaviors of employee, developer, and the tester. In the IDE, we see all four classes. I will show you how the automation engineer class can override the method from its parent class. Right now, there's only one method in the automation engineer class, and that's the initializer method. Also, from the previous session, I created an instance and wrote two print statements. Erase both of these print statements. The reason we override a method from its parent class, because the parent class method does not fit what we want to accomplish in the child class. 
let's override the get employee info method from employee. At this point, if I call the method by writing automation that get employee info, we see the IntelliSense shows employee. Watch what happens when I override the method. To override a method in the child class, we define the method with the same name as the method in the parent class. To save time, let's copy and paste the method in the child class automation engineer. Then return another statement for salary by writing salary colon and I'm going to append the function using string and then pass in self dot salary. Also insert a new line. Now if I use automation dot get employee again to call the method then the IntelliSense updates to show Automation Engineer. Although there are two methods with the same name, Python will only focus on the method in the child class because I am using an instance from the child class. Therefore, Automation Engineer will ignore instructions from the employee class. However, the employee class still maintains its own set of instructions. If I create an instance by writing employee equals employee and the name will be employee ed, employee number five and salary will be a hundred thousand. So at this point, the automation engineer class has no effect to the parent class employee. So we don't have to worry about breaking anything in the parent class. If I call get employee using the employee instance, if I call get employee info method using the employee instance, we see IntelliSense shows employee. Now we can perform the same process for developer and tester classes because they both are parents to the automation engineer class. I'm going to print employee dot get employee info and print automation dot get employee info and when I play bingo the console shows how it's a difference between the child and parent classes the child class automation engineer has three lines for employee name employee number and salary while the parent employee class has two lines for employee name and number so polymorphism for python allows us to override a method the parent class defines a general method that's common to all child classes then allow the child class to define its own specialized method thanks for watching and i will see you in the next session